And that, some of you are here. <laughs> we start the proceedings, and before we start the proceedings, I'd like to ask respected Mr. Narayan to come to the stage, please. Madam Kulani Ghosh. Professor Shushant Rathurutu, Thank you. One more thought to share with you. <clears throat> on my every birthday, birthday, on recent years, he used to give me a book written by him every year different to the other. And most of it was, had beautiful poetry. And I have decided today we are going to make a discount of it for people who are 
interested can request me by email. We'll try to make sure it reaches the list, it reaches you soon. Thank you for coming. And now I request Mr. Ibkinana to chair the session. Or release the book by Professor Shusan Mr. Bharati, 1921. Renowned physicist, UK scientist, Professor David Bigar Sina, Sri Vikalyani Bosch, my dear friend and former Vice Chancellor of Vishwabharati University, Dr. Ray, and members of the Sorkins. We had two obituary references this morning. But let me start, out, start off on a happier note and say that we should today congratulate Professor Sinha on the distinction conferred upon him by the Chief Minister of West Bengal day before yesterday. Both to science and I believe to the Bengali language. I think all of us should use this occasion to remember that great minds do not remain stressed to one particular area. They, they encompass many different fields. I congratulate you, Professor Sina, for being a maestro not only in science but in literature as well. Thank you. I find the environmental liberty because I think this is a very uh, close audience. To say I'm never, I'm never very sure when Professor Pikasana asks you to do something, what expect what exactly you're expected to do. I was under the impression that there were going to be two separate parts of this morning's program. One was the inauguration of the day's events. And the next one, a more, much more pleasing one, they will be releasing Professor Dr. Gupta's book. So I tried to combine the two into one, and let me see whether I can make any sense of what I'm trying to say. This conference has been on for already for this is the third day. And one would have thought that the third day would be far less important or interesting than the first two. I know there are very important scientists present and they may feel offended by that. But when you have an event that coincides with the 160th birth anniversary of Gurudev Rabindranath Tagore and the birth centenary of Sachidit Ray, I think perhaps science has to possibly take a back, back seat. I think the lofty heights of literary 
and intellectual thoughts sometimes can be far more attractive than the wonders of science. So I think I will, my introductory remarks today, I will harp more on our literary and other guides and less on the scientific persons who are no, no less important. But I think received a great deal of uh, uh, what, attention in the last few days. Before that, I must admit to a fact that if I felt humble in the presence of such leading scientists who were present there that day on the first day of the, and the inauguration of the MMAP conference, today I feel even more insignificant. Where the genius and spirit of Gurudev Prabhupada Tekov and Sajjit Rain seems to pervade every nook and corner, not merely of this hall and building, but the vast expanse of Kolkata and Bengal, and perhaps beyond that. I did feel diffident in accepting Dr. Sinha's invitation to inaugurate this event, but you know it's very difficult to say no to Dr. Sinha. He is he's a bit of a bully in these matters, and I'm glad that he allowed me to be there because I would not have been present with this event otherwise. I think the, the inauguration of the uh, TN, TCNSP, the Tagore Center for National Science and Policy, is a seminal element. And I was fortunate being present at its, at its birth in 2013. And today, I think, when this conference is being held under the umbrella of the DCNSP, I think it would be relevant and very appropriate if I recall the words that were expressed or uttered by Professor Sina on that occasion. I quote, Long years ago, we had a dream, a dream to establish an institution where natural science and the philosophy of science will be the focal theme. Today, the time has come to celebrate science in resonance with Gurudev Rabindranath Tagore's perception of science, philosophy of science, and ultimately, the science of consciousness co -tains. I hope you recall this statement. Present at this inaugural meeting was also this remarkable theater personality to whom uh, there was a brief reference, and you really give your student reverence on his device. Savitra Chatterjee, whom at that conference, Professor Pekar Sina referred to as his inspiration, someone who exuded a kind of erudition and sublime passion for the liberal arts, which he said was very rare in today's world. Professor Pekar Sina also mentioned on that occasion that the presence of the gathering of the Vice Chancellor of Vishabharati that no less than Professor Dattarayan <clears throat> was something with added possibility to the entire proceedings. Today, almost a decade after that inauguration, Professor Sinha has conjured a similar set of thoughts and ideas reflecting how deeply he feels the need to integrate science and the arts. I go to Professor Sinan's understanding of science and the arts and the importance he attaches to integrating science, philosophy, and the arts. 
It is seldom. And I said to them, because I am purpose enough, that one finds an individual who, having made a mark in one field, recognizes the criticality of other streams of consciousness. It requires a person with all encompassing vision, like Professor Binar, to do this. When the DC and the NSP were set up, I happened to be the governor of this Court, and therefore I was asked to inaugurate the DC and NSP. I don't think it, I need to repeat all that I've said on that occasion. But I want to reaffirm what I said then and what I continue to feel that I marvel at the scientific temper that pervades Bengal's consciousness. And the sense of all I feel and have about the intellectual effervescence that pervades Bengal, which has been nurtured over the decades. I'm glad that a decade down the road, this remains true even today. I therefore continue to marvel at the fact that one corner of India manages to sustain this extent of scientific endeavor, irrespective of the nature of the polity, economics, natural disasters, and the like. It speaks volumes of the culture of the people of Bengal, who are clearly a breed apart. I wish I was a part of Bengal in that sense. Gurudev Tagore and Bishop Arthur are two epitomes of what I have in mind. I think with this, we are, I can say that I've inaugurated this session of the conference. Do we go straight away to the book launch? Coming to the release of Professor Sushanta Dutta Gupta's book, Vishwa Bharati 1921 to 2021, A Vision Betrayed. I only wish that I had a little more time to dilate on the contents. Written by a former distinguished Vice Chancellor of Vishwa Bharati, I think it contains the essence of what should have been Bishop Bharati, I may say so, and I hope I can't be at the mall for saying that it is no longer that uh, fulfills that vision. For Bishop Bharati is not is just not a mere university. It's far more than that. It symbolizes not mere academic excellence, but as conceived by Gurudev, represents the soul force. Professor Sushanta, uh, Sushanta's book contains a critical assessment of the hundred years of Vishwabharati's existence. In the first part, it deals with the grand vision of Gurudev, and notwithstanding some contradictions, has succinctly projected Tagore's vision regarding establishing a new model of education, quite different from the extant British idea of the university. It is more in tune with the values enshrined in our traditions, embedding education in the midst of nature, combining at the same time both Eastern and Western values. In the next part, it chronicles the parliamentary debate that took place in 1951, when the Vishwa Bharati Bill was passed to make it a central university. The parliamentary debate details the inevitable erosion of Gurudev's original ideals through the imposition of MTC rules and regulations and controlled by the government. In the third part, 
the book entrusted on the present state of affairs, echoes apprehensions that have existed about the current state of affairs in Vishwa Bharati, many of which have also been voiced in Parliament. It details how there have been major deviations from Gurudev's vision. The book ends with a few suggestions on how to restore the original values of the university. I was a rector of Vishwa Bharati University in my role as the I was the Pradhana, the Pradhana, and I wrote as the governor of Bengal. And I think one of my finest moments was holding the convocation of Vishwa Bharati, which had not been held for several years. And I think it's definitely an indelible impression on my mind. But it's something you have to not really see, to feel to understand what is taking place. And therefore, reading from his uh, book, I could sense the feeling of pain as to how this glorious institution seems to have declined very substantially over the years. As the director, I was well aware of some of the problems and the conflicts that existed, many of which are detailed here in the book including the tensions between current inmates and the larger or wider South Indian fraternity. Several steps taken by Professor Sattva Gupta as Vice Chancellor on the academic front were clearly a major step forward, as were the efforts made by him towards infrastructure development and campus beautification. Notwithstanding this, it led to unwarranted controversies between the no changes and those who wanted Gurudev's ideals embedded in a more modernized vision of a university, better suited to the present day and age. Vice Chancellor Dasagupta then became the target of a great deal of intrigue. I hope you don't mind my saying so of intrigue and unwarranted criticism, which greatly inhibited him from fulfilling many of the work, work by steps he had initiated or had in mind to turn Vishwa Bharati into a modern, modern university, but still one closely related to Gurudev's ideas. I would like to compliment Professor Sushanta Dathakurta for bringing up such a scholarly work. I was aware of many of his problems and travails, but I admit I could do little more than sympathize with him since it is a